Hello everyone, hope you all are doing good. I am Anjana from LearnoHub, the free learning platform where you can study math, science and SST absolutely free at LearnoHub.com. Today's class we are going to discuss ICSE class 10 physics chapter 9 household circuit. In the previous video we have already discussed what is transmission of power and house wiring. Today we will be discussing some essential components of house wiring system. Are you all ready? Let's begin. First one is safety fuse. We have heard this word fuse. Okay. Now we have a power line from this power line electricity that is through cables electricity will be uh, reaching all these devices let it be here we have taken fan here we have taken a bulb and the iron box okay so all in all these devices electricity is reaching through cables now imagine a case there is lightning so during lightning what happens more charges okay so these charges comes to the cable what happens then? The current is increasing. So from the power line, some fixed amount of power will be reaching here. Okay, so power is fixed. Now we know that power is equal to voltage into current here. What is increasing? The current is increasing. Now if this current reaches all these devices, the different appliances, what happens? More than the required current, when the, it reaches the devices, it may get damaged. The appliance may get damaged when more current reaches them. Okay, in order to prevent this, in order to prevent more amount of current reaching the device, what we do is we use a fuse. Okay, this device is called a fuse. Okay, a fuse is connected here and this fuse prevents more amount of current reaching the devices. Okay, from the power line. Now, how does this fuse work? You want to know, right? So what is an electric fuse? This is how our electric fuse will look like. An electric fuse is a safety device which is used to limit the current in an electric circuit. I have shown you how it is. Okay. The use of a fuse safeguards the circuit and the appliance is connected in that circuit from being damaged. So two purposes. The, purpose, the main purpose of using a safety fuse is to protect the device, to safeguard the device. If more amount of current reaches the device, it may get damaged. In order to prevent this, the safety fuse is being used and this is how it looks like. Let us understand the working principle of fuse wire. The fuse, it works under the principle of heating effect of current. We have studied the heating effect in the previous chapter. We have Joule's law of heating. Heat energy is equal to I square RT. What does this mean? When current increases, heat energy also increases. They are proportional, right? Okay. Now, here we have cables. Through this cables from the power line, electricity is reaching different devices. So here we are connecting fuse. So what happens when fuse is connected you want to see right? Now to the cables when electricity passes through the fuse, excess amount of electricity or current when it passes through the fuse, inside the fuse there will be a wire. Okay. This wire starts melting. Okay. When does it start melting? We know that when electricity increases, heat energy is also increasing which means the temperature is increasing. Okay, when this temperature becomes equal to the melting point of the wire, this temperature increase becomes equal to the melting point of wire, the wire starts melting. Okay, when it melts, here what happens is the wire breaks. Okay, connection is getting broken. This is called blowing off. Okay, that is the fuse is getting damaged. Now what happens? Current cannot flow through this wires and it does not reach the excess current does not reach the devices and the device is protected. Understood? So this is how a fuse works. So once this fuse is used, now what happens? You will have to replace this wire. Okay. This is the olden case. In olden days this was done where this wire will be replaced. Clear? So this is how a fuse works. So this fuse is getting damaged and the devices are getting protected. Here, the excess current or the current does not reach the devices. As we said, when the current increases, the temperature of the fuse wire is increasing. Now, what are the factors on which the rise in temperature of fuse wire depends? On rise in temperature, it is represented as delta T, change in temperature. Okay. What are the factors on which it depends? First one is the current rating. Okay. That is, it is proportional to the square of the current rating. For each device, there will be a current rating. Then the second one is radius. Radius or thickness of the wire that is being used. It 
it is inversely proportional the rise in temperature is inversely proportional to the cube of radius of the wire that is being used okay so this is the relation delta t proportional to i square divided by r cube so when current increases what is happening the rise in temperature is also increasing when the radius or the thickness of the wire increases what happens they are inversely proportional which means delta t change in temperature or rise in temperature will decrease okay and it does not depend on the length of the wire that is being used these are the only two factors which on which the rise in temperature depends and it does not depend on the length of the wire that is being used okay whatever the length of wire be it doesn't matter material of safety fuse what type of materials can be used to make a safety fuse first a fuse is a short and thin piece of wire of uniform area of cross section so it should be a very short and thin piece of wire okay first point second made up of a material of low melting point why low melting point we have discussed that it should get melted up easily right so when current increases current increases heat energy increases which means the temperature is increasing and it should easily reach the melting point of the wire only then it will start melting and the current flow stops that is the wire will get disconnected wire breaks or it's blown off okay so for this reason we'll have to select a material which is of low melting point okay and it should have a high resistance only then the current can flow through it easily okay now next alloy of lead and tin this is a material that is being used an alloy of lead and tin alloy means is a mixture of lead and tin is used as a material of safety fuse and its melting point is its melting point is given 250 degrees celsius which is a very low value so 250 degrees celsius melting point alloy of tin and lead is being used to make a safety fuse wire okay then if you are using copper or aluminium in these cases the melting point will be about the range of 1080 degrees celsius can it be used for making a fuse no right because here the temperature is high that is the melting point is high which means it does amount of current should be given only so much amount of current if it is given that can reach the heat energy which is required to reach the melting point temperature equal to the melting point only then the fuse will start fuse wire will start melting so providing this temperature is difficult okay so these materials cannot be used okay next safety fuse is always connected in series what is the reason for connecting a safety fuse in series for example if you have many devices and you're connecting a safety fuse in parallel okay let us consider here you have a safety fuse this is your bulb some devices this is your fan then you have some other device like a lamp okay so here electricity is passing that is current which reaches this point here we have parallel connection okay fuse is connected in parallel to all these devices normally in a circuit we know that devices are connected in parallel okay so what happens to this current this current splits into four okay in each device different amount of current flows okay then what happens this fuse may get melted up because of this current but what about other devices current is reaching these devices right different amount of current is reaching these devices and the device may get damaged what about series connection here you have a fuse which is connected in series to the other devices like bulb a fan and lamp so the devices as usual is connected in parallel now the fuse is connected in series in this case what happens the current that reaches this point here what happens here you will be having the melting wire okay so when this current reaches temperature increases this temperature reaches the melting point the wire starts melting it breaks the wire breaks okay now no current can flow to this devices and the devices will be safe so this is the reason why we are always connecting a fuse in series by not connecting the fuse in parallel so this is a reason understood so while choosing a material to make a safety fuse these points should be remembered so we have understood what are safety fuses and which materials can be used to make a safety fuse now let's see the construction and working of a safety fuse here you can see this is how a safety fuse looks like you will be having a porcelain holder then you have two metallic terminals represented by t1 okay t1 and this is t2 now 
a wire is stretched this wire is a fuse wire a wire is stretched between the two terminals okay then you will be having this is where it can be fixed so this holder can be fixed and removed remember that this porcelain holder is being used because it is a good insulator okay which means it doesn't conduct electricity electricity should not flow here what happens if electricity flows when you are removing you will be getting electric shock so in order to prevent this an insulating material or a material of low conductivity should be used and that is why porcelain holder is being used okay same material will be used to make the socket and this socket will always be fixed on a board or a wall okay you have seen this material right so this is how you will be removing it and fixing it this is how the fuse looks like then you will be having the live wire through this live wire the circuit will be completed to different devices these live wire will be going okay so this is how the setup is now what happens is we have studied when excess current flows heat increases temperature increases when the temperature reaches the melting point of fuse wire the fuse wire is broken fuse wire is broken means there is a gap created okay when a gap is created no current can be flowed okay through the live wire also current cannot flow through the live wire since the current is not flowing it cannot reach the devices or the appliance so this is what happens so this is a working of it okay and the device will be easily protected okay now what happens is once a fuse a blowing off is happening you know that to recover from this what should be done we have to see what the problem in the circuit is okay after checking what the problem is and then resolving that problem you can replace this fuse okay replace this fuse means i can change this wire the fuse wire can be changed i can do replace a fuse okay cartridge type fuse so we have studied about different devices for example you have bulb you have a fan then you have a grinder you have a washing machine okay and we have studied that these devices will always be connected in parallel why they are connected in parallel because the current required for each of them to work is also different yes they are connected in parallel only then different amount of current can flow through them depending on their voltage and power okay now when it comes to the case of the fuse that is being used for them will be depending on the current rating okay depending on that 1 ampere 2 ampere 5 ampere 10 ampere 13 ampere different rating of different current rating fuse should be used okay depending on the devices when you take the case of bulb fan and all the current is the current that is required for them to work is very small compared to grinder and washing machines they require more current so when it comes to the case of costly appliances like refrigerators air conditioners then geysers television etc okay in this case cartridge type fuse will be used okay this is how a cartridge type fuse looks like here you will be having a glass case this is the outer coating glass we know is an insulation then you will be having a fuse wire this is a fuse wire okay and it is solder at both the ends soldering means it is being fixed at both the ends so using a soldering iron and lead lead material can be used to fix it so this is soldered at both the ends and these are metal caps on these metal caps the fuse wire is soldered okay this is how a cartridge type fuse looks like and it is being used not in the case of a bulb or fan but costly appliances when it comes to the case of costly appliances different current rating fuses can be used and this type of fuses are called cartridge type fuses okay reason for connecting fuse in the live wire you have to remember this point the fuse is always connected to the live wire and not the neutral wire you can see two figures here the fuse is at the live wire and here the fuse is at neutral wire let's see what is the reason so here you can see the fuse is always connected in the live wire before the appliance so that as the current in circuit exceeds the rating of fuse it melts and breaks the circuit first before the current reaches the appliance okay just check this figure you have a high potential okay from this high potential we know that the current is flowing so this is your live wire and this is your neutral wire so the live wire the current flowing when it reaches the fuse due to this current you have, the fuse will be having a current rating okay when the current reaching here exceeds the current rating what happens this is your fuse and this fuse wire starts melting fuse wire starts melting it breaks okay once it breaks what happens there is no more current flowing through the device okay here you will be having the appliance and the appliance will be safe when excess current the current exceeds the current rating of the fuse 
what happens current is not allowed to flow further okay and the device will be protected okay here zero volt that is there is no current reaching here also the neutral neutral section is why is the neutral wire being used neutral wires is for the reverse transfer okay so here there is no current reaching the device and the device is protected now when it comes to the case of neutral wire here you have the live wire this is neutral wire and the fuse is connected to the neutral wire okay we know that the current flows through the device through the live wire okay now what happens here you are placing the fuse okay here due to this current what happens the fuse breaks okay the fuse wire gets blown up blowing up now what happens is the current you can see the current is still reaching the appliance which means the appliance will get damaged okay 240 volt is reaching the appliance and the appliance will get damaged even though the fuse fuse wire is melting is there any use no use right so here in this case if you touch the appliance or you touch the live wire you are not going to get an electric shock but in this case the live wire you can see the current flowing and through the appliance also the current is flowing the excess current will reach the appliance and the device will get damaged so if you touch the appliance or you touch the live wire you will be getting the electric shock because here the neutral wire in the neutral wire the fuse is being connected so this is the reason why you will have to connect the fuse always to the live wire okay to prevent the flow of current to the device when it exceeds the current rating okay as we have said the current rating for different devices will be different for devices like if you are using a lamp or a bulb or fan in these cases we know that to work this device a small amount of current is only required in that case let's say a 5 ampere current rating fuse can be used okay to protect this and these devices the fuse used will be a very thin fuse okay but when it comes to the cases of washing machine washing machines then television AC in all these cases we know that these appliances the costly appliances will be consuming more current when they are consuming more current the fuse that is to be used will at least be of 15 ampere current rating only then you can protect these devices okay this should be a thicker one thicker fuse should be used in these cases now how to calculate the current rating current rating of fuse in a circuit can be determined using this formula you have to know the total power of appliances in the circuit okay uh, each appliance will be having a power you have to know the total power of the appliances in the circuit and it should be divided by the voltage of the supply there will be a supply voltage so dividing this you will be getting the current rating of fuse that is to be used in the given circuit okay in cases of offices and all then in case of ring system you will be using a current rating fuse of 30 ampere in offices and all you can use a current rating of 50 ampere because more devices are there and in that case what will happen the current rating of devices will also be high the, the, therefore the current rating of the fuse that is being used should also be high let us take an example an electric motor of power 3 kilowatt is to be operated at mains of 220 volt find the current rating of the fuse to be connected with the motor you have to find the uh, power rating the current rating of the fuse that is to be used now the power is given in this case power total power p is equal to 3 kilowatts which is 3000 watts then the supply voltage is given what is the supply voltage v is equal to 220 volt okay now you can find the current that is drawn by the motor how much current does the motor draw current drawn by motor will be equal to the power divided by voltage total power divided by supply voltage which is 3000 divided by 220 300 divided by 22 you will be getting 13.6 ampere okay this is a current that is drawn from drawn by the motor now you will find the current rating current rating of fuse should be higher than this okay therefore you can use a fuse of 15 ampere current rating closest to this it should be a value that is higher than this value the current that is drawn by the motor so 15 ampere current rating fuse can be used in this case miniature circuit breaker or mcb nowadays instead of fuse this device is being used this is how it looks like here you can see 
these will be in the on state normally now what happens is if there is any fault in the circuit okay when there is any fault in the circuit due to overloading or short circuiting due to high voltage what happens means it falls this thing it falls we say this trips it trips okay so this is the same thing that is happening when the fuse wire melts in case of a fuse okay here instead of this melting process what happens is just this trips now when the fault in the circuit is resolved after that you can just simply on this okay then it the circuit that is the normal circuit starts working so this is how the mcb works it is more easy compared to a fuse okay mcb is a more convenient than a fuse wire because there are two reasons first it, it avoids the inconvenience of connecting a new fuse wire so in case of a fuse we have studied that once the fuse wire melts what happens it doesn't work anymore so you will have to replace the fuse okay we will have to replace the fuse wire so here in this case there is no necessary of it is not necessary to replace the fuse wire why because the stripped one the stripped one you will have to just on it okay very simple now the second reason is it is much safer due to its quick response in this case the response is very quick it will be just taking 25 milliseconds okay in that time it trips so you can just check what the problem in the circuit is the fault can be determined and then it can be easily resolved after that you can just on this so it is very easy compared to the normal fuse switch switch is something that we are using from our childhood in our daily life we are using switch for everything to on a light to on a lamp to on a washing machine to on a mixer grinder you need a switch okay now what is a switch switch is a device which is an on off device for current in a circuit for current to flow in a circuit a device that is used to on and off the device it is called a switch okay now there are two types of switches first is single pole switch and the second is double pole switch single pole switch is when you have only a switch to on and off the device okay for example you are using a switch you can on it and off it that is a normal case when you press this what happens it is in the on state so when it rises up it will be in the off state okay this is a single pole switch so you can define a single pole switch as a switch used with an appliance to start or stop the flow of current to on a light to on a bulb to on a fan what is being used is a single pole switch okay and this single pole switch it is disconnects only the live wire from the appliance Okay, here what happens is when the disconnection in the live wire happens it is in the off state and connection is given it is in the on state so this is a single pole switch now when it comes to the case of double pole switch for example you have a staircase on the staircase to on the light what happens is you will have a switch at the bottom of the staircase and at the top of the staircase you will be having another switch okay so first when you on here what happens is the bulb glows so in order to off it you can do it from the upstairs from the upstairs you can either off it or on it okay just by pressing what happens there will be action happening that is on and off can be performed with two switches okay also you have seen that in some cases a single switch can control all the appliances at the house okay a single switch when it is in the on state all the devices can be on and it can be off to bring all the devices to the off state okay in order to uh, off the light in bedroom kitchen and hall if you have a switch okay this switch on offing what happens all these devices gets off so this type of switch is called a double pole switch the main switch at the distribution board used to switch on or off the mains okay, main switch it is the main switch actually in this case it disconnects both the live and neutral wire here if it is the only the live wire that is disconnected in this case both live wire and neutral wire will get disconnected okay we have studied that the fuse is always connected to the live wire in a circuit similarly the switch is also connected to the live wire let's see what is the reason for connecting switch to the live wire here you can see a figure in this figure the switch is connected to live wire and in this two figures you can see the switch connected to the neutral wire okay take the first case in this case you can see the switch the switch is in the on state when switch is in the on state the due to the high potential due to the supply voltage what happens the electricity can easily flow through the bulb okay that is the switches in the on state there is connection and then 
the electricity is flowing it reaches the bulb and the bulb starts glowing okay and this is your return path through the neutral wire you have the return path back to here okay now the second case here what happens the switch is in off state which means the connection is not given okay the electricity will not flow through this and the bulb does not glow at this time it is very safe to touch the bulb or if you have to repair something you can do it okay there is nothing going to be happen it is not dangerous here you have the return path through the return path the current will be flowing back okay that is both the live wire and the neutral wire will be at a zero volt potential that is it is safe to use okay you can touch the switch you can touch the live wire you can touch the terminals you can touch the bulb it is easy you can just repair whatever repairing work should be done you can do in the off state now when it comes to the case of neutral wire just check this figure here you have a neutral wire on which the switch is connected here you can see the switch connected this is in the on state in the on state what happens the circuit is complete the current flows through it through the live wire current flows and the bulb glows okay but when it comes to the off state in the off state what is happening here again the current is not allowed to flow okay the current is not allowed to flow that is the circuit is not complete and the bulb does not glow that is okay but still it is not safe to touch the bulb or it is not safe to touch the live wire what is the reason here in this case you can see that through the neutral wire here the connection is broken only at this point okay still there is a high potential the device or the appliance is connected to the high potential here you can see the appliance is here and this is a high potential region okay the connection is not connection breaks in this point because of the off stage of switch here what happens the appliance is here you have the live wire and the high potential supply is here still there is a connection between them due to this reason what happens it is safe it is not safe to touch the bulb or touch the terminals of the wire what happens you may get an electric shock because here the breaking that is the disconnection is only happening to the neutral wire okay only neutral wire still the device is being connected to the supply okay clear and this is the reason why always connect the switch to the live wire and not the neutral wire safety precaution while using a switch a switch should never be touched with wet hands you have heard your parents asking you not to touch a switch with your wet hands after using a washroom what you do is directly go and off the switch with your wet hands have you done this okay you should never do that after using a washroom when your hands are wet you should never touch a switch or the charger anything what happens in this case is here you know that this is your switch okay there will be a live wire okay when this water reaches the live wire in that case what happens is it is conducting okay through the live wire that through the water what happens water contains ions and the electricity is getting conducted so in that case the same current it can flow through your body okay it reaches your hand your body it body contains fluids the body contains blood there is again ions in that case when the body in through the body when the current flows you will be getting electric shock you will get electric shock because our body is also a conductor of electricity so using a wet hand what happens the electricity can flow through your body and you will get a fatal shock in order to avoid this it is said that you should never use a wet hand to off or on a switch okay three pin plug and socket you have seen plugs and socket in a cable at the end of the cable you can see this type of a pin okay so this is called a two pin cable and this is a three pin plug okay so this is a two pin plug and this is a three pin plug here you will be having a live pin and this is for neutral pin okay on the left you will be having live pin and this is for the right side it is for neutral pin this is mainly used in case of low power consuming devices for example in case of a table lamp then table fan in all these cases you can see that is these are devices which consume less current to work these devices you will be using a two pin plug so when it comes to appliances other appliances like washing machine mixer grinder refrigerator television ac in all these cases you can see a three pin plug so these are devices which consume more current here you will be having an earth pin this is on the left side you will be having the live pin and on the right side you will be having the neutral pin okay so 
three pin plug. What is a three pin plug? In a three pin plug, the top pin is for earthing. So you can see this is a top pin. The pin on the left is for lime and the pin on the right is the neutral one. This is a neutral one. Okay. Then the earth pin is made thicker and longer than the other two. Just look at this figure. You can see compared to other two, you can see this pin is more longer and it is more thicker. We can see what is the reason for it. So while inserting it into a socket, you, can, you have seen a socket. So we'll study what a socket is. So while inserting, you can insert this part, this pin only to one hole. You cannot insert it to any other holes. Okay. We have studied that this part is for earthing. This pin part is for earthing. What is earthing? We know. Okay. Now here, this earthing is done. When you plug in, if there are chances for the device getting damaged okay in that case first the earthing will help okay so earthing can save the device so when you plug in the current start flowing through the live wire so before that earthing will be done if there is a fuse then it will be getting blown off okay and the device will be getting protected for this reason so for the safe working of the device always the earthing is done first Okay. So the first current flows to the earth wire. Now, in order to insert, it is made more thicker and it is more uh, made more longer because to insert it, that is to insert at the correct position, this is being done. Okay, and you have to remember this material is usually made up of brass. It has a metallic coating and it is usually made up of brass with an ebonite coating. So this much points you will have to remember when it comes to the case of what a 3-pin plug is. 3-pin socket. Now what is a 3-pin socket? You will have to insert this plug somewhere, right? So for that purpose you have a 3-pin socket. So this is how a 3-pin socket looks like. When it comes to a 2-pin socket, it will be here. You will be having only for neutral and like. Now, when it is for a 3-pin socket, here you will be having a switch and this is how the socket looks like. You will be having 3 holes. Okay. So, this will be metallic. This is all made up of metals. Mainly in case in this case, it will be made up of brass. Brass holes will be there. So, this is for earth pin. This is for the neutral pin on the left side. And on the right side, it, is, it will be for live pin. Okay, it is a fixture in an electric circuit in which the plug is inserted, somewhere where the plug is inserted. The upper bigger hole in the circuit is for earth connection. This part is for earth connection. Then, while the hole in the right side is for connection to the live wire and the hole on the left side is for connection to the neutral wire of the supply. So, you can see this. So, when you insert here and switch it on, what happens? Electricity starts flowing and the device starts working. Okay. Understood? What are the safety precautions that should be taken while using a plug and socket? We have studied the safety precautions to be taken while using a switch. So here we have similar things. First one is hands must be completely dry. You should not use a wet hands. What is the reason again? Here again due to the live wire, water, electricity connection through the body, electricity flows and a fatal shock can happen. Okay. Same reason. Now the second is a plug pins should fit in the socket tightly. Here you can see if there is a loose connection. In that case, you have you might have seen that some sparkling will be produced or the burning of both plug and the socket can happen. Okay. Due to this reason, you should always remember to fit it tightly into the socket. The plug should be fit tightly into the socket. Loose connection should not be there. Okay. Earthing or grounding. What is earthing? In simple words, excess charges can be sent to the ground or to the earth by the process of earthing. Okay. So here you will be discussing about two types of earthing. First is the local earthing and second is the earthing of appliances. Let's see what local earthing is. We have seen that in a home circuit, you will be having house circuit, house wiring. You have seen that many devices are connected in parallel. All are connected to the main circuit. Then you will be having a kilowatt hour meter. So a wire from this kilowatt hour meter, the earth wire is sent to the ground. Okay. So here in this setup, you will be digging a hole deep up to some 2 to 3 meters deep in the ground and you will have a pipe through which a copper wire pass. So you have to remember this copper wire that is taken should be a thick copper wire. Okay, Why thick copper wire is used? The main purpose is to send the charges to the ground. Okay, So when you use a thick copper wire, more charges, the excess charges can flow through it and reach the ground. Okay, it should be provided with proper insulation, proper insulation, only if proper insulation is provided, the charges will not leak out. Okay, for this purpose, proper insulation should be provided. So, this is a hole through this copper wire is passing. At the end, you will be having a thick copper plate. 
at the end there is a thick copper plate all the charges will be reaching the ground plus you will also have a mixture of charcoal and salt taken which is dumped here so the purpose of this is to give a proper contact between the plate and earth okay so between plate and earth a proper contact can be created by putting a mixture of charcoal and salt here so this is a sub step okay so here the first end of the copper wire will be connected to the earth wire of the kilowatt hour meter and the other end will be at the ground here what happens the electric charges can flow through it and then it reaches the ground the device will be protected the chances of electric shock will reduce okay the chances of electric shock can be avoided by doing this type of local earthing local earthing or all the devices together this type of an earthing is done clear we have studied local earthing next is the earthing of an appliance how earthing is done for each appliance when you take the case of a bulb or the case of a fan then a mobile charger in all these cases you will be seeing that there is a two pin plug that is used only two pins will be there for the plug that is being used in these cases so when you consider the case of other appliances like a washing machine or the case of an ac television or a refrigerator in all these cases when you check you can see a three pin plug that is being used okay three pins will be there here these devices we know that low current is flowing through them for their working low current is only low power is only required but when it comes to the case of these devices more current is flowing so the chances of getting electric shock will be higher in these cases in order to protect us from this each device will be provided the earthing okay there will be an earth wire from each of these devices which goes to the ground okay here in these cases there will be for the electrical equipment there will be a metallic coating with some color the paint it will be painted a metallic coating will be given and this metallic coating the terminal of the metallic coating will be connected to the earth wire and it goes to the ground okay so this is how earthing is represented so this shows earthing it is connected to the ground and excess charge can flow to the ground okay here we know that the charges flows through the live wire in the live wire a fuse and the switch all will be connected to the live wire we have studied so if there is excess current the fuse will be getting melting okay it will protect the device and the chances of getting electric shock will also be reduced so you will be having to touch the device so you will have to touch the switch we know that in this case more current is flowing only if earthing is properly done earthing of the appliance is done in that case we will be protected so if there is a metallic case that is given and the metallic case will be connected to the ground the excess charges can reach the ground color coding of wires in a cable we have studied the old color coding so here we have the old color coding that is live wire the insulation on the wire the insulation will be given the red color in case of earth wire green color insulation will be given and in case of neutral wire black color insulation will be given now the new one the one that is the insulations that are being used at present are the neutral one will be blue in color blue in blue color coating insulation will be given to the wire then live wire it will be in brown color and the earth wire it is somewhat a yellow green mix okay here earth is green in color here the earth is somewhat yellow green mix you have seen this right now what is the change that is happening in case of live wire from red it has changed to brown color and in case of neutral wires it has changed from black to blue okay so here you know why this insulation is given to understand which the wire is which wire is okay so it is it will be helping the electricians while making the connections and all so each electric appliance is provided with a three core flexible cable so these are the three flexible cables the insulation on the three wires is of different color insulation is given in order to understand which wire is which okay what are the safety precautions to be taken while using electricity we have to take precautions in order to avoid first is to avoid fire how fire will be caused so here when more current flows through the live wire so in the live wire or in the cable when more current flows it can cause heating okay this heating is caused mainly due to uh the short circuiting or due to the insulation if the insulation breaks in some cases in that case what happens is more current can flow through the live wire and it can cause fire there so in order to avoid this what can be done 
is to use a wire that is of more current carrying capacity compared to the total current that is flowing through the circuit okay the total current which is flowing through the wire should be first not after that you will have to choose a wire which has more current carrying capacity in that case you can avoid this fire and the second one is an electric shock an electric shock may be caused in a device due to there are five reasons. First one is damage or poor insulation of a wire. You are taking a wire which is broken at some point. What happens? And the insulation breaks, that is the current can flow out. Okay. In this reason, what happens? Electric shock. Then you touch the wire. If there is no insulation, what happens? Electricity starts flowing through your body and your body will get a fatal shock. The second is touching the appliance with wet hands. This we have discussed before. When you touch with wet hands, what happens? Due to the presence of iron through the live wire, the water reaches live wire, what happens? through our body electricity starts flowing and due to this reason our body we know it contains fluid which contains ion due to this reason we will be getting a fatal shock next is no earthing of the appliance if earthing is not done the excess electricity cannot reach the ground grounding won't happen and in that reason also you will be getting an electric shock fourth no fuse provided with the appliance when fuse is not provided you know that when the excess current reaches a fuse it will start melting and avoid it from flowing to the device if there is no fuse provided what happens excess of current can flow flow through the device okay when you touch the device you will be getting an electric shock next is no local earthing local earthing means for all the devices together an earthing should be provided if earthing is not provided again you will be getting an electric shock there are chances of getting electric shock now what are the precautions that can be taken to avoid electric shock? We have studied what are the reasons that can cause electric shock. Now what are the precautions? First one is the insulation of wire must be of good quality and should be checked from time to time. So if there is no proper insulation, there are chances of electric shock. So you have to check if the insulation is proper. Good quality insulation wires are used. Then what happens if after some time the insulation may break? Okay, So you will have to replace the insulation. So in that case, you will have to remember the insulation insulation should be of a good quality and should be checked from time to time the second one the appliance should never be operated or touched with wet hands this is very important you should never touch an appliance with the wet hand we know that electricity can flow through our body it can cause a shock so you have to never check, uh, touch an appliance with wet hands third one each appliance must have its metallic case earth we have studied in each appliance earthing of appliance there is a metallic case and this metallic case should be earth metallic case we know that metals conduct electricity through this the earth wire it should reach the ground okay the current should reach the ground each appliance must be provided with the proper fuse so providing fuse what happens the excess current when it flows through the fuse the fuse will melt and the device will be saved okay fuse in its live wire before the appliance when before appliance in the live wire there should be a fuse and the fuse wire melts if there is excess current and the device will be saved there will be no chances of electric shock there must be proper local earthing even the case with uh, we have discussed the case with the uh, earthing of appliances similarly local earthing should also be provided and we know that the local earthing will be provided with respect to the kilowatt hour meters okay that's all for today. In today's class, we have discussed some appliances of house wiring system. Hope you all enjoyed the session. I'll be back in the next session with a new chapter. Until then, stay tuned to Learn Hub. Learn Hub free hey for best hey. Thank you.